I've covered a lot of data breaches on this channel, and usually the number of personal records that get released in any odd data leak are in the thousands or sometimes in the millions. But today, when I was browsing my friendly neighborhood dark web hacker forum, I stumbled upon a post titled National Public Data Full DB 2024, which supposedly has the personal data of almost 3 billion people in it. That's right, folks. This text data weighs in at 277 gigabytes uncompressed. That takes up about as much space as Call of Duty Black Ops 6, 4K texture packs and all. And it has data points in it like first name, last name, date of birth, address, phone number, and social security number. Now, at first, the hackers that stole this database were trying to sell it for three and a half million dollars. But then they decided, hey, you know what? I'm feeling generous today. I'm gonna just give it away for free to all of my hacker forum buddies so I can earn myself a lot of reputation. And as far as the leak itself goes, it's pretty much structured like a phone book, but with social security numbers included as well. And that SSN data point is especially disturbing because I don't know about other countries, but here in the United States, social security numbers are used when you apply for a loan, when you open a bank account, credit card account, credit reports, and pretty much any other financial transaction involves your social security number. And the last four digits of a person's social security number are often used for security verifications whenever you call up your internet provider to interact with your account or your utility provider or your cellular company. So the data in this leak could be used by somebody to shut off your power or open up new utility accounts in your name at different houses that they're squatting in or trying to rent out to people like, hey, you wanna stay in this abandoned house and get some free power? Sure, just come in here and I don't know, give me a hundred bucks a month. Or they could call your cellular provider and use your social security number to pull off a SIM swapping attack. So this is where an attacker basically takes control of your phone number by getting the carrier to program their SIM card with it. They would just call your carrier, pretend to be you or someone authorized on your account and say that they lost their phone and now they've got a new one and they need the phone number back. And then after they do that, the attacker is able to get all of your calls and all of your text messages on their phone. And that includes temporary codes that Google or Facebook sends you for changing your password and two-factor authentication, which means that those accounts could be compromised too. Who would have thought that a nine digit number assigned to you at birth could cause so much havoc if it fell into the wrong hands? And speaking of wrong hands, you're probably wondering who this data was stolen from because most people don't just have 300 gigabytes of social security numbers and names and addresses and stuff laying around. So the data in question was stolen from National Public Data, which provides an API service for background check services. And they got the data through web scraping across public and non-public sources without anyone's consent and from purchasing the data from data brokers. Again, without the consent of the person who the data pertains to. National Public Data then combines these different sources and packages it together in a format that XML APIs can read easily. And then the different background check services online create a front end for their customers to do these background checks and these different kinds of lookups, often in a not so convenient way that takes artificially long to load the data, only to ask you to pay a fee at the very end when you thought it was free. So I guess one upside to this data breach is that now I can do background checks locally with grep instead of having to go through that nonsense anymore. 
Now, I haven't been able to look through this data too extensively since it's basically a compressed COD game worth of information that takes a long time to download since it's probably hosted on a remote server in Vietnam somewhere and it has to pass through the Onion network to get to its destination. But based on the limited amount of grepping that I've been able to do on the two ssn.txt files, I can confirm that this breach doesn't actually affect 3 billion people. And I can actually demonstrate why that's the case, and hopefully I can do so without doxing anyone. So here in LibreOffice, I've copied over a sample of the data leak, and I've organized it into labeled columns. So we've got ID, first name, last name, middle name, etc. These are all of the same columns that came from the database leak. It's just comma separated values, you know, there's a nicer way to display all the information. Um, now, the reason why the data in these cells looks like a bunch of random letters and numbers instead of a legible name is because I hashed all of the personally identifying information here to protect this person's privacy. Um, the only one that's not hashed is this ID column here, which is just the line number from the data set. So this isn't really considered PII. Uh, so you can see here that this is eight different records. And if we start looking through each of the columns here for first name, all of these hashes are the same. Um, and if you're not familiar with hashing algorithms. They basically take input of a string and they crunch it down into something that can't be reversed. So there's no way to actually get the person's first name from what you're seeing here. That's why it's safe to show it. Um, but also any two strings that are the same, if you feed them into a hashing algorithm, the hash is going to be the same. And if those strings deviate just a little bit. And a string can be an entire novel, mind you. So like if you literally just change one letter in a novel and then you pass that into a hashing algorithm, you're gonna get two completely different hashes from that. So the fact that these are the same proves that the input strings I fed were the same as well. Uh, so we have the same thing going on with last name. Okay, all of this is the same. Middle name, or really just middle initial, um, or sometimes it's a middle name, you know, it's if you actually look through the raw data, um, it's mostly middle initials and sometimes middle names. But anyway, that's all the same. Dates of birth are the same. Now with addresses, there's a little bit of differences here, but I've actually highlighted in different colors the ones that match. So these two addresses are the same. Um, I think, yeah, the green ones match. This orange one is unique. And then these purple ones match up as well. Uh, so there's only four unique addresses here out of um, eight records. All the cities, uh, county names, state, and zip codes are all the same. So, you know, maybe this guy owns multiple condos in one building, or maybe he moved around town a few times. I'm not exactly sure uh, what's up with that there. And if there were any doubts that this is all the same person, in the SSN column, these are all the same too. So it's all the same social security number, it's all the same person repeated eight times in the database leak. And there's several different examples of this um, if you actually look at the raw database leak of the same person being repeated or being repeated at different addresses. Um, I've seen a few P.O. box entries for people. And another positive observation is that I wasn't able to find records for several people who authorized me to look them up in this database leak, including myself. And I think the common thread here with people I wasn't able to find where these people either used data opt-out services or they just have a very, very minimal online footprint to begin with. They don't really have any uh, subscription services that they pay for. They don't have any social media um, or you know anything like that. I guess they're kind of off grid, <laughs> you could say. So if I had to guess the actual number of people in this leak, 
is probably an order of magnitude or possibly a little less than what some media outlets are saying with 2.9 billion. Uh, but still, you know, that's over 200 million people's social security numbers leaked, which is most of America. So yeah, keep an eye out for identity theft, uh, people opening up new credit cards or new utilities, new lines with the cell phone company and stuff like that under your name and keep an eye out for the outcome of this class action lawsuit that's been filed against national public data because of their failure to secure this massive trove of data that they had and also the fact that they scraped this data in some really shady ways without anyone's consent in the first place. Hopefully their punishment is severe enough to compel all these companies that have poor security practices and data hoarding fetishes to stop it and get some help. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, base.win, where you can get awesome merch like the tie-dye tour tee or the come and find it hoodie. 10% discount for using Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.